Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to how to use Photoshop. We are going to be looking at a document that is um, new, but I wanted to show you, these are two previews of files that you're going to be looking at when you start doing more of the final project for us here in Common 101. But in the meantime, I did want to go over just some basics of how Photoshop works. And so I thought that I would do so by an introduction of the tab system, which is the first view that you get here. We're going to go to make a file new. And I'm going to make a small document. Note, when you are making a document that you're saving for a blog, you will be saving that document down to a 72 pixels per inch resolution. But if you wanted to do something that's going to be for print, say we're making a real movie poster like this project is going to ask you to do, and you were going to actually print it, then you'd be saving that resolution at 300. This is a very big difference between the two styles of images that you would be researching to find, because basically, it's easy to find any image at a low resolution. It's much harder to find something at a higher resolution. So that's something that I've made video tutorials about prior. So you can take a look at my YouTube video uh, channel if you'd like to. And uh, my name is Jocelyn Foy. And um, or you will this will be something that can come up in discussions during your class. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a basic file. It's going to be a seven inch by five inch document. It's at 300. Typically when we're dealing with color settings, CMYK is your standard for print and RGB is your standard for web. That has changed a little bit more recently where you find printers who have combination of both colors and now printers will specify what they want if we're talking about an outside company. Let's go with a standard though because I'm dealing with a 300 dpi file for print. Let's stay with a print color setting, CMYK, and say OK. So we come to a document. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to go under my view here. I'm going to zoom out. And that's going to allow you to see the whole canvas that I'm working in. And now I want to go through a few of the basics and understanding. The two most important layers that you could possibly have open for Photoshop are layers and history. These two are going to do an, ex an extensive amount of help um, in developing your projects as well as backtracking if you need to fix something. Now the most important tools that you have, all of these are very important, but for foundation education I think that I'm going to go over the, I would say, eight most important things so you can get a handle on them. Notice that each one of these keys has a little arrow in the bottom right hand corner of them. That's telling you that when you hold it down, you can look and see that there are a number of sub tools in each one of those. But let's go ahead and start with the marquee tool. The marquee tool is used to drop particular color in places or to cut things out. I'm going to use in my layers bar here, we have a little icon that's for the new, uh, new layer creation. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to, now see this is the first thing in Photoshop that people get confused about, is that the paint bucket tool and the gradient tool are shared. They've been like that forever and Photoshop has maintained that relationship, but it is confusing because they don't make a lot of sense together. Now I want to drop a color into this rectangular tool here and I'm going to see that my color here in the foreground, this white, is going to be what goes in there. The background color, which means if I were cutting something out, would show up to be black. So I'm going to double or one click on that foreground color and pick a color and then I'm going to drop that color in. Now notice that color went into its own layer. This is very important if you wanted to be able to later make edits to this particular layer. You'll notice that when you touch something in a layer, I'm up here in my property manager of my tool, have an auto select button selected and a show transform controls selected. That means that the show transform controls allows me to rearrange the shape of something as well as to rotate it on the page. Also, it allows me that when I have, and I'm, oops, we have to push the plus meaning or the check meaning we want to install that action or the minus or the circle with the line through it meaning we don't want that change to go through. Now the other thing up here is auto select that as we build more shapes into our design, we will find that um, we will get confused as to what is on what layer. Here, notice this little arrow. I flip the two colors from foreground to background. Again, I'm using the color to drop in. So what is important in noticing here is that as I want to move one thing to another place, it allows me to click between those. In previous versions of Photoshop around CS4 or CS3, you would have to choose the layer to make a change to it. Now, we can move these things. Again, the show transform controls remains on, and that allows us to make these edits. Um, and now what we're going to do is go in and we're going to add a layer of text. So if I click the type tool and I click someplace on the page, now my, my machine's going to take a minute here, I'm going to click and it's going to allow me to make some sort of type. Now notice at the top here in the property manager it's telling us the color of the type is black, the size of it's higher, 
Um, Myriad Pro is my font style. And if I hold down, you'll see all the different types of previews of what these fonts look like. So I'm going to type in um, COM101 is the name of our class. To set that into place, I'm going to click that black arrow and I'm going to bring it down. Oh, whoops, it's not COM. We are GRA. Okay, GRA101. So what that's going to allow us to do then is we can move that around with the black arrow or if we wanted to go back and make changes, we go back to the type tool, we hold down and drag across it and it allows us to make that change. There are font styles, there's color settings, and there's alignment. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to go on and we want to take a look at if there was something that we had, how do we make cutouts of that particular thing? So here I'm selecting this particular shape. And let's say I want to cut um, a particular shape that is a tracing of something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down this layer and bring it forward, which allows me to change the hierarchy of content on the page. And I'm going to cut this shape out here. So I'm going to come in with my polygon lasso tool. And all I have to do is make a few clicks. And I have to always end where I began. And that's going to allow me to delete that space. So the Polygon Lasso tool is an excellent tool used for um, making uh, custom cuts out of something or selections of around something. But you will notice that it's got this marquee dot going around it. When you have something selected with a marquee, oftentimes you'll find that you can't select anything else except for what's inside that area. So what you have to do is either go up to the Select selection and go to Deselect, which means you'll take that marquee off, or you can just come into a marquee shape, click someplace else, and it'll be gone. So that's a real helpful tool. Now let's see if I can align these up a little bit better. I'm going to use the key, the um, arrows on my keyboard to move them to if I want really small motion. Okay, so next what we want to look at is we want to um, add a photographic element. And I'm going to go in, let's see if I have anything... I have a photograph of an art project of mine that we'll pull in. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this picture and I'm dragging it on top of my Photoshop icon and I'm going to open it here. So in this particular picture that I have going on here, what I want to do is I want to select some of the picture portion where the people exist. So I could do that in a couple ways. I could hold down, come back to my rectangular marquee, highlight around the people, go to edit, copy, and then come back to my new poster and go to edit paste. That brings the graphic in in this particular size. Now notice it's very interesting, but this particular graphics resolution, if we go up under image size, it's going to tell us it's 72 inches per uh, pixels per inch, excuse me. And if we come to this original, when we come to the image size, Remember, we had it at 300. Now, there's the discrepancy between a web-based graphic and a print-based graphic. When you put a web-based graphic with a smaller resolution, the image is going to turn out to be much smaller. One of the greatest no-nos, too, that I will say about when you're dealing with graphics in Photoshop is you never want to expand a photograph beyond the pixels that you bring it in at. So, unfortunately, this is the size graphic that I have to work with. I can't work with anything bigger. So I will use this more as a design element than I will for anything else. I'll set it into place. And if those mark, if those crop tools, or excuse me, those transform controls get annoying, you can always turn those off. Okay, so that's something that's a real challenge. Now, if I wanted to do something more specific, I could use my, my magnifying glass, zoom in. You can notice that the resolution is not great here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to use this polygon lasso tool and I'm going to click small clicks around the edge of the person's body with the hard hat. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to click along. I usually like to click slightly on the inside if possible, which is just going to allow me the opportunity to not deal with issues in the background. And you keep clicking so that what happens is, is that you form a very unique little shape. Okay, so Oops, I double clicked and it tried to connect the beginning to the end. I'm going to come back up into my property manager. I'm going to go add to selection and I'm going to add more parts. It's not as tricky as you might think. The part that is tricky is you have to start and stop what it is you want to add. So what do I mean by that? It means that here I'm going to take this gray area away from the selection. 
I'm going to come in, I'm going to select this, this whole part, but I'm only going to start and stop at the part that I don't want to add. Now I'm going to go back, I'm going to add in his hand. Here we go, here's my shape. It's the most funny looking hand, but hey, at least we're giving him something. Okay, so I made that selection. Again, we come up under Edit, Copy, come back over here, and Edit, Paste. Okay, now one trick that I've had is a student of mine was working on a project and they said, well, if my image is that small, then what can I do with it to make it more of a design element? You can always come into the layers. You can hold down and drag on top of the new layer and you'll find that you can duplicate. So you can create your own border. You can create your own patterning design. You can create strange shapes. And remember, as soon as you turn on the... Um, the show transform controls that will then allow you to make rotational changes as well. And at any point, um, and you'll notice I'm duplicating here, at any point I can double click on one of my layers and I'm going to get what's called a layer style. In this particular instance, as it pertains to a project that will be coming up, you can come in and you can add a drop shadow to one of these people. What I like a lot is you come down to the color overlay and you can turn that little tiny graphic of which is a vector, or excuse me, a raster image, meaning it's a photo, and you can turn it into a what looks like vector graphic, meaning it's a flat graphic, somewhat like a silhouette, becomes completely obscured, but becomes really fun. Now, over here in your layers, you'll notice that these are your layer, um, signifies what the, the effects are that are put onto that particular layer. That means at any time, if you didn't want that, you could turn that off, and it's not going to affect the original quality of the graphic that you have. Okay, so let's say that you've gotten to the point where you feel really good about this, you really love it, you want to save it for the professor for review. You're going to go to do a save as, and mind you, we didn't save it as a raw PSD, which is a Photoshop document, so let's do that. We're going to do a save, and we're going to call it study. I'm going to do save here. And then what I want to do is I want to prepare it for grading. I'm going to do a save as, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG file for posting into the discussion board for review amongst my peers and professor. I'm going to save it as a PDF for my, up, um, I'm going to upload for grading. Uh, so go ahead and push OK. It'll ask what kind of quality do you want. You definitely want the best you can at this point. And you're going to say yes. But now we have to save this file also for our blog. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go in. Here we go. My file is working hard at being saved. We'll wait a little longer. We've waited a little longer then. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go to image size. And we're going to save it to 72 for our blogs. Now that's going to drastically reduce our graphic. I'm going to come into view, zoom in, or we could go faster and we could click the magnifying tool here, magnifying glass icon, and that's too much. So I'm going to come up to my property manager, pick the smaller, okay. And then I'm going to come and do a file save for web. And this wonderful window is going to pop up. This window is excellent in terms of saving a graphic so that you are prepared for optimization as well as the time it takes to do a, um, takes for an image to load. Down here is an important area to watch. And the one thing I will say is be cognizant of what kind of size you're dealing with. So 256 kilobits per second is about the speed in which public uh, government computers are loading. So that means that that's a good size to work at. Most other computers at our homes are somewhere in this range, depending on what kind of community bandwidth we get. So it's not bad to stay with 256 kilobits. And it's showing me it only takes two seconds for a JPEG file at a high quality. And so I would save that. Now, to test it, I could also go to GIF and see how much loss it takes. Because these graphics hardly have any photographs in them, it's taking less time to load that, and that's more attractive to me. So I'm going to save that. Now notice, GIFs are different than uh, JPEGs, and that is that GIFs only can deal with a maximum of 256 colors. That is why people will find that they'll get images that have very strange renderings if they have to reduce the number of colors. 
and that color redux reduction is all, and you look down here and you'll see what I mean. You have to reduce the colors that make up a series of things, and as a result of that reduction, you'll get a very strange pixelation effect. Some people like that pixelation effect, but most commonly not. Um, in our case, we're really not worried about how much time it's taking. It's only one second. I will say you generally want to have a graphic that if you're, if you're uploading to the web, it takes less than 10 seconds to load. So either that means you have to change the style of the photograph or the size of the photograph to meet that time load, or you're going to have to also consider different parameters in which it's being created, whether it be the number of colors, whether it be less photographs, more vector images, you name it. Um, that is a possibility and it's always doable. It's just creative strategies that we as your faculty are here to help you with. So you're going to go ahead and save. And I'm going to save that as a GIF. And I load it to the web. Okay, you guys, I hope that helped as an intro to how to use Photoshop. Bye-bye.